Welcome to another fabulous unboxing on Linus Tech Tips. This time we're going to be having a look at the Phantom 630 High Performance Modular Full Tower Computer Case from NZXT. This is pretty similar to the Phantom 820, which we actually had a look at not that long ago, except it has been decreased in size a little bit, and it has also been decreased in price quite a bit. So there goes my my video switcher, which I sort of will need at some point. But let's have a look at what NZXT has to say for themselves on the outside of the case. So here we go. We got four or five and a quarter inch bays, cooling options galore with two 200 millimeter fans included and one 140 millimeter fan included. Lots of clearance for things like graphics cards, cable management, and CPU coolers, and finally some dimensions. It comes with a two year warranty, although I'd expect that with the case there's not a whole lot to go wrong. Next generation Phantom design, both inside and out. High end water cooling support allows use of multiple radiators and multiple radiator sizes. Very cool. SSD mounts behind the motherboard tray. Split level motherboard tray allowing increased rear cable management. We will check that out. I'll show you guys that on the back. Fully modular internal drive base allow you to customize the Phantom 630's layout to suite your needs. I think what they meant was suit, but they tried. Give them credit for it. Okay, easily removable dust filters. Illuminate your I.O. ports at the back. This is cool. That's a great feature. Integrated high power 30 watt single channel fan controller. This is changed and we don't have the so full external peripheral support with multiple USB 3 and an integrated SD card reader. Okay, so the things that seem to be missing so far are the customized lighting effects. So that I wasn't, I'm not talking about the lighting at the back to see your, your peripherals. I'm talking about the uh, internal lighting that was in like, you know, different colors and stuff that was very, very cool. So that's missing. And then, uh, there we go. Uh, that, that seems to be sort of one of the biggest missing features. So we've got a white version of the Phantom 630, apparently. I actually had no idea what was inside. The included foam is quite thick. So you can see it's probably about an inch thick around the outside edges. However, that's not all the way, so it's quite lightweight. Um, I don't know if I would be a big fan of shipping an entirely built liquid cooled system in the stock box. I would probably want to change it out for something a little bit more robust. But the case itself is strong and feels rigid so far, so that will actually help compared to if you had sort of a flimsy case inside of a hard foam packed box. So let's go ahead and take the plastic off here. And you know what? There's actually a lot of plastic wrap on this case, so we're going to do that off camera. And we're good to go. So I'd love to have Diesel do a nice pan of the front panel here because we are starting to get used to this Phantom look. I remember when the first Phantom launched, some people were not necessarily that impressed with the aesthetic. I personally liked it, but I think now that we've seen it a few times in a few slightly different variations of the case, the 410, the original, the 630, and the 820, I am definitely used to it. I think it looks great, and there's a lot of practicality that goes along with it. So this is magnetic, which is actually really nice. And this right here, this is a very loose mesh, so you can see the fan very clearly which shows you how loose the mesh is. You can also see there's a lot of space between the mesh and the fan. That, and there's a dust filter in the front, which I just discovered and didn't know about. Okay, so there you go. So that actually is there for a very practical reason. That makes it easier for the air to pass through the mesh without making additional noise. There's also what appears to be a dust filter directly in front of the fan, so that'll help with things as well. Up here in the front, you can find those four, five and a quarter inch bays, as well as the built-in SD card slot. And on the top of the case, I'm going to get uh, Diesel to film that for me again. Two USB 3.0 ports, two USB 2.0 ports, headphones and microphone. Ah, yes, the other thing that was missing from the Phantom 820 is the very complex fan controller. Now we've just got a single fan controller. So down, middle, up. Uh, that turns the I.O. lights on and off. You've got power and reset switches here, as well as indicator LEDs. So this right here is just sort of, you got one option, or one, you've got one setting for the fan speeds inside your entire case, which I actually personally don't mind, because quite frankly, think about it this way. How often are you going to be going, oh, well, I'd like my CPU fan at high, and I'd like my GPU fan at low, and then my case fans at medium? I don't think that happens that often. I think you're either idling, and Diesel's putting his hand up because, nope, forget it. You don't do that. Um, 
I think you're either going, okay, well, I'm idle, I want it quiet, or I'm, you know, I'm gaming and I want to, you know, crank it up. So those, those are pretty much the options, regardless of what sort of smart Alex on my production crew might be saying. So we're going to go ahead and give you guys another look at it here. So again, you can see the mesh on the top is quite loose, and there's one of those included 200 millimeter fans, and I've totally got it on the wrong camera right now. So now you can see what I'm actually talking about here. There's an option for another 200 millimeter fan here, and this is again quite a loose mesh with a lot of space, so it's going to be very, very low restriction, which is great for cooling, and Phantom Series is about nothing if not cooling with sort of cool looks. So on the back you can do a variety of different sort of fan mounting options, 120 and 140, and then you can move them around as you see fit. Also it should be noted that this back piece here, and it's actually going to be easier for Slick to show you this, this back piece here bulges out a little bit. So can you see that? that sort of that, there you go, you can see that bulge? Yeah, you can see it now. So it bulges out a little bit and there's a very good reason for that. It again puts more space between the fan and the grill, which reduces noise and reduces restriction. Very, very good stuff. We've got ah, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine expansion slots. So that means that you can put pretty much whatever uh, whatever motherboard you want in there. There aren't many motherboards that have more than nine PCI expansion slots. In fact, I can't think of any. Although if you had one that had nine and then you needed a dual slot card in the bottom, that might be an issue. But still, I expect it to be fine. And you've got a bottom mounted power supply that looks again sort of pretty, pretty standard there. So left side panel. Ah, there we go. You've got another 200 millimeter fan. That's the other included 200 millimeter fan with the, is that three included 200 millimeter fans? Now hold on just a minute. No, where's the 140 mil fan? Something in here must be a 140 mil fan. Well, let's open it up and find out what the heck's going on because apparently there are three included 200 millimeter fans. One on the front, one on the side, one on the top, even though it would appear that the Ah, yes, no, three included 200 millimeter fans. There's also a window. So the window lets you see pretty much just the CPU socket area and the, yeah, pretty much just the CPU socket area as well as a rear 120 millimeter mounted water cooling unit or something like that. Like if you were to install something like an NZXT Kraken in here, for example, that would be a great fit and it would go perfectly in there. I would show you the Kraken, but it's actually on our test bench right now interior options so check this out you've actually got a lot of different options here so there's that 200 millimeter front fan and I can't see slicks in my way so I can't tell which camera we're on yep we're on the right one okay so there's that front 200 millimeter fan you've got a lot of other options here as well though so you can actually do dual 120 or dual 140 millimeter fans if you would prefer and then what's cool about that is I can't quite see how they come out it looks like it's on the other side but you could pull these drive cages out and you could actually do uh, you could put radiators here as well which is very very neat so we're gonna show you that we'll pull this out you can also see oh check this oh look at this this is great so there's actually screws here so you might have to get kind of close to see that there's screws here so you can pull out not only the cages but also this guy right here which is the um, the fixture that these cages actually attach to so cable management holes here at the back of them sliders here to mount them and then the whole thing comes out if you just decide who cares I'm gonna mount two SSDs on the back of the motherboard tray I'm not gonna need anything else and that's it that's all I need very very cool stuff cable management holes galore so they're using an extremely soft rubber for the cable management holes you can see here that it's very very pliable there you go see that one two three so this is where you'll run your graphics card ones this is where you'll run up from your power supply so that'll be down here there's a ton of room at the back for cable management look at that you can pretty much stuff like my hand back there and not see check that out hand behind the motherboard tray lots and lots of room uh, this is a neat feature that we've seen on NZXT cases before this rotating piece right here so check that out so that allows you to either sort of you, you just put either a 120 or a 140 millimeter fan there and you can either blow it up towards the CPU or across the graphics cards the choice is totally yours so if I had a graphics card that for example exhausted air this way then I would go and I would install that graphics card and then I probably actually wouldn't want to do that anyway because it would still be pointing away but okay don't worry about it uh, the point is point it up there point it there the choice is actually yours there's also another here we go fan filter 
So the fan filters are half and half. You can pull out half of it from the front and half from the back. That prevents you from having like the 800D, a fan filter that's this long, that unless you actually keep your case four feet away from the wall, you aren't even able to remove without lifting it up and moving it around, which with these heavy cases can be a bit of a problem. Included cables are all black. Love to see this. This is a good thing. So we've got, there's your USB 2, there's your USB, other more different USB 2, uh, there's your fan connector, okay. Uh, so that's for adding, I guess looks like one more fan, because the included ones are presumably, ah yeah, that's for attaching the side panel fan. And then we've got uh, front panel connectors and USB 3. So we're going to go ahead and whoop, open it up from the other side, so you guys can check it out, and it is apparently pretty tight. So I'm going to go ahead and grab a screwdriver, which I happen to have handy. The odds of that actually were not very good. I don't usually have a screwdriver handy for these unboxings. I never really showed you guys the uh, construction of the side panel, so I'm just going to show you that right now. So there's a little bit of flex to it, but with a case this big, that's to be expected. Um, they're not, it's not like they've just gone and built it out of sort of an incredibly thin steel or anything like that, although we've seen that trick before, not from NZXT. I don't think I showed you guys the toolless five and a quarter inch bays actually before we saw, oh no way, these are made of metal. Very, very nice. So, there you go. You can hear that snap to them. And then you can also screw them in, should you so desire. Now this is the second time we've seen this in the recent past. But it looks like the, uh, the three and a half inch bays actually come out from the right hand side instead of from the left side. This is a bit of a unique design to me uh, because I would normally think of sort of opening up the left side panel to get at anything on the inside of the case, but I guess it doesn't really matter. Two and a half inch drives go here in the middle. Three and a half inch drives are on rubber isolating mounts here. And you can see there's some flex to it. So it's designed to, to bend easily there. But once you put a drive in it, that'll firm right up and you won't have to worry about it sort of going anywhere. Oh, there's the included fan controller. Love this. So sorry, that one's just on there and it's specifically pre-run for you to plug in that side panel. You can run 10 fans off of the included controller. I think it supports up to 20 watts, so you don't have to worry too much about uh, overloading that. No difficulties there. Here on the back, you can see that there's tons of cable management space, so I'm going to get slick to kind of have a look here, where you can, there's more than enough space to put a 24-pin cable back here. And then there's actually some parts that pop out a little bit more, like up here where the SSD mount is, but that's not an issue because you should be running your 24-pin here. If you, I don't know if you can see this, but this is at a slight slant here. So this is further in. In, or this is further in than this, which is further in than this. So there's a, there's a shape to it here. So you run your 24 pin over here and up here and you'll have enough space. And then there's lots of space back here for things like your 8 pin or whatever else like that. Uh, what's also cool about the back is they have a ton of cable management spots. So you can clip or you can uh, zap strap cables here, 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 here. You can tell that NZXT here and here and here and everywhere, here, here, here. You can tell NZXT actually puts a lot of thought into how people are going to cable manage the case to keep all the wires flat and make it so that it's easy to close the other side panel without sort of fighting with it and forcing it into place. The SSD mounts are here, so they are mounted with just a thumb screw. You pull these off, put in the four screws into the SSD, and then you are, whoops, I was on the wrong, there you go. So you put four screws into the bottom of the SSD, you put it back into place, and then you screw it back in. This is a lot more elegant than what we saw in the Define R4, where you basically couldn't uninstall the SSDs with the case actually, with a motherboard installed, because you had to screw it in from the other side, which is not really an optimal configuration. And, okay, you know what? We're going to do this off camera. Okay, I think we pretty much figured it out. So you have a number of different options. So number one is if you so desire, you can actually just install these by hanging them from the ceiling. So there you go. So now you don't have to have anything here, which means you can pull this out and mount a radiator on the bottom. Remember, that's a filtered intake, so that's, that's a good thing. You could also just pull them all out. So you have a single, a double, and a triple, giving you a total of six, three and a half inch. So you could pull them all out and you could mount radiators here in the front. 
Okay, so that, that's another option. You could take your single one and put it here, although you can take the double one and put it there because there's no room at the back to pull the hard drives out. This is, would have been an argument you know, that I would have made at NCXT if I worked there for mounting the hard drives the other way because then you wouldn't have to worry too much about that. You could just sort of you know, not worry about that and mount things the other way, but um, I wasn't there, so... Nobody asked me. So you can also make things sort of more low profile here and you can have more space here for presumably the longest graphics card ever made, uh, the, the Twinkie edition graphics card because the Twinkies are, see, product placement. Maybe we're getting money from Hostess, which doesn't actually um, exist anymore. So that's probably not what's going on. Um, so yeah, that's pretty much it. I mean, you can just sort of put a single triple one here and there you go you just basically bolt them in at the back and I'm, I keep missing here but you guys get the point it does work and that pretty much wraps up this particular unboxing thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the Phantom 630 from NZXT which actually is not over yet because I didn't show you the 140 mil fan at the back as well as more importantly the options for radiator mounting here in the top so you can do a triple 120 looks like you can do a combination of no looks like you can do dual 140s and then they've used slits instead of holes so you can you actually have a lot of flexibility in terms of where you position the fans and you can do a dual 140 radiator as well and then last but not least you can leave in those dual 200 millimeter fans with filters and go that route. Now we're done. Thank you for checking out my unboxing and first look at the Phantom 620 from 630 from NZXT. Don't forget to subscribe to Linus Tech Tips for more unboxings, reviews, and other computer videos.